This is not in inside Iran. You cannot do that inside Iran in a seaside. This is in a country uh, of Turkey and outside Iran, just neighborhood. All of them Muslim, now they worship Jesus. And there is many of this. We just recently have 200. And church is growing. In Turkey, outside Iran, we have Elam ministry established. There are 40 churches, all of them Muslim background, established or planted by Elam ministry. And 4,000 believers worship Jesus, all Muslim background. This is the good news. And to continue to pray. But also, I can see I live in this country now from 2007. God brought me here. And now we are 2017, 10 years. And I just, as my feet put, uh, my feet touched the land here in UK, God spoke to me. He said, Great Britain is a great opportunity for great commission. Here is a mission field. Great Britain took the gospel to many nations. Now you don't need to go to many nations, even to the Middle East, because Middle East are here. North of Africa, all the Muslims are here. You just need to come out of your home. Across the street, you see all the Muslim faces. Just pray and worship Jesus and then share gospel. Today, I want to share with you how to be a witness to a desperate soul in a divine appointment. As we heard in our reading, Acts chapter 10, there was a certain man, Italian, cappuccino, espresso, <laughs> called Cornelius. He was not Christian. He was not Jewish. He will love God. And there are many Cornelius people in this town or city or still town. Big town. In Bournemouth and around. These people are people that they worship some kind of God but it's not true God, like Buddhism, like Hinduism, or Muslims. There are sincere people like Mr. Cornelius, as we read, uh, you heard in chapter 10. He was a also generous giver to poor people. And his family and himself, they were god spearing people and devoted. Regularly, they were worshiping some kind of God. And we have people, Muslims, they are like that. They're all Muslim, are not ISIS, okay? Are not Al Qaeda, radical. There are many that they love God, but like me, they don't know how. They don't know what is the true God. And this is our responsibility. God is looking for these people. As we see in this story, the angel of God came and encountered this man. And what did he say? It is interesting in this story that the angel of God, in verse 3, you see, verse, uh, he came, he didn't share gospel with Cornelius. What he has done, he just pointed to a Christian disciple of Jesus was called Peter. Go and find Peter. That's a message for us. Sometimes people say, God, come and visit people and bring them to Christ. No, because God, the angel of God came because God wants to use you and me to share gospel, to be witness. This is a call of God for every Christian born again to be a witness. There is not everybody, every Christian has not called to be full-time minister. Yes? But all of us, we are called to be witness. How we can be a good witness, powerful witness, especially in divine appointment. I want to give you some step. Exactly you see in this story, the Holy Spirit through Luke allowed us to have this scripture to know how God is working. This is the application for the church to be witness. First of all, um, 
there are many Cornelius people. This Cornelius man was Italian. Peter was from Middle East. Peter Christian was a witness to a European person. Now we are in Great Britain. God wants to use British people who carry the gospel, who have the Holy Spirit, to share gospel with a lot of Middle Eastern people in this country. Yes? How you can find people in a divine appointment like Mr. People to reach Cornelius people? Who are these Cornelius people in this town? The one that they are not Italian maybe, but they are Arabs. They are Chinese. They are Japanese. They are Iranians, Afghans, Turks, Kurd. They are everywhere here in this town. I lived here and I know. And let's say others, Pakistani. Okay? And they are sincere. They are worshiping some kind of God, which is not true God. How we can be like Peter. I want to share five steps for you that is help us to find ourselves in divine appointment with desperate soul that they are ready. You just need to share and they will come to the knowledge of the Lord as Cornelius and all his family came to the Lord. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and praise God for that. The first step, as we see in the life of Peter, Peter, he was a fisherman. The first first step is having a life fully surrendering to Jesus Christ, which means that Jesus Christ is our first priority, not other things, not our job, not our school, not our even family. Putting Jesus first, our relationship, and also doing his will, not our will. Sometimes we call Jesus Christ is my Lord, but it doesn't seem we are Lord. We do our own stuff. Surrendering, having surrendering life, totally obedience to Jesus because we taste his love. As a Muslim, I never taste love of Allah. When I came to Jesus, I taste his love. I said, Jesus, I want to sacrifice my life for you. Anything you want to do with me and use me to save many people. And praise God, when you do that pray, then he said, one year later, he came to me, he in, and also confirming with my pastors, he revealed to me that I have to stop my medical job and even not to become a surgeon and leave all medical job, position, finance, everything. It's not easy, as it, yeah? But by his grace, I said yes to Jesus. I loved my medical job. I was successful in that work. And you know, medical work is a service to people and you can be a good witness but his way is not our way are we willing to totally surrender our life to jesus that's the first step to find yourself in divine appointment for witnessing to people such as cornelius peter was a fisherman jesus said i want to make you fisher of souls and he obeyed of course he had some uh, problem. Three times he denied, but grace of Jesus embraced him because it was out of his weakness. Maybe some people here, you had some falling or backslide. Jesus' bosom is open for you. Just come to him. He will restore you as he restored Peter and how Peter was a great witness there. The second step to find yourself in divine appointment to witness here in this town is having a relationship in prayer and word of God daily, which you will find in verse 9. You know, Peter was in Joppa. He went there to raise a dead, a girl dead, and he rose the dead. Then he was waiting there in Simon's house, the tanner in Joppa. Actually, that city was beside in a seaside by the sea. It's like Bournemouth. Hallelujah. You are in sea. And sometimes we have to be careful not our attention become just on sea and seaside. But even in beach, we can have a divine appointment to share gospel. The, the, the summer is approaching. 
anywhere we can be a witness for Jesus Christ. And Mr. Peter was at the sea. It was that city. But in verse 9, you see, about noon, the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up to the roof and prayed. He became hungry. You see, prayer life, how is our prayer life? I mean devotion, having prayer and meditating on God's word, which is relationship. We need to be careful that our devotion not become a religion because I am coming from religion. And I saw sometimes Christians become religion like Muslim. You know? But when we go to devotion, it's relationship. That then you see in his prayer, and God spoke to him. He showed a vision. He showed him a sheet that there was some sort of food that God revealed to him that there is a time that you can eat. There is no unclean. And kill and eat, which means you can eat pork, Mr. Peter. Pork, you know, pork is unclean for Muslim. Okay? And... God reveal when you spend time, the second step is, because in this verse you see Peter was in prayer. And also, God gave his word three times, which means meditation on God's word. When you meditate on God's word prayfully, something will happen to you. First of all, you know God. You know his heartbeat. Where is his heartbeat? He will change and renew your mind. And you are ready because all of us, we carry on some sort of prejudice in our mind towards some culture. That's why we don't take a step to reach them. Because still we have, in every culture, they have some sort of prejudice in their mind. By renewing your word, your mind, during devotion, you, God changed his mind. That he can take a step and talk and eat with Mr. Cornelius. There are some fear maybe in our mind. When you have a proper devotion life, God will take care. God will set you free from any fear you have from Muslim or other culture or many, any, many, maybe any prejudice in our mind. I had that. For example, as an Iranian, I grew up in, in, in Iran. Any, there was a lots of voice against Israel in Iran, you know. And I was, in my mind, I was negative about Israel. When I came to the Lord, meditating God's word, God changed my mind. I love Israel. I love everybody. And I pray for them. They need to find salvation in Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen? And then the third step is open to the Holy Spirit and listen to the, Him. You have Holy Spirit inside you. You are the temple of God. Just imagine God, the third person of God is in you. And then in verse, in verse 15, <clears throat> you see here, no, sorry, verse 19. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit, which means Holy Spirit, said, Holy Spirit will speak to you. If you want to find yourself in divine appointment, you are in the bus, you are in university, you are in workplace, you are shopping in Sainsbury or somewhere else, you need to be open to the Holy Spirit. Maybe he said, go and talk with them. As you heard in my story, that guy in the bus, he said, I see Jesus Christ in your face. In Iran. That's the way God works. And Peter was open. The third step is listening to the Spirit and take action. Take a step. And Peter did, and as a result, fourth step take place. Fourth step is being in relationship and friendship with people. Because he invited in, their, in his home. He opened, he, he heard. Then in verse 23, Peter invited the men into the house. The man that they, in his eye was unclean. Now God changed his mind. Who are unclean in front of your eye in this town? God will change your mind when you have a proper devotion. God wants to renew our mind. Then we are ready. We are bold to share gospel and take a step. And he went in friendship. During that friendship, as you share gospel with some other culture in this town, you invite them to their home. 
wisely. You go to their home because after that, later on, Peter went to the Cornelius' home and sit and talk and eat together. And it's interesting, when he went there, he shared. When you are there, make sure you share your testimony. You share your other's testimony. Because Peter shared a testimony how God changed him. In verse 28, he said to them, You are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with a Gentile or visit him. But God has shown me. God has changed my mind. That's why I am here. And same it happened for us. And then make sure when you are in building relationship with a Chinese, with a Muslim, with the Arabs, make sure you listen to them because he was listening uh, to them. From verse 30, you see, he was listening. Their story, what happened? Then God will guide you. The fifth step is in 34, verse 34. There is a certain time that you start to share gospel. Because in verse 34, you see, then Peter began to speak. He didn't rush to speak right at the beginning. But after he shared the testimony, he just had a fellowship with them, and then heard from them. We need to hear from people. Then he speak. What he spoke, I encourage you to go and read tonight and meditate on his speech uh, about the resurrection of Jesus, death of Jesus, and forgiveness of sin for everybody. As he shared, the Holy Spirit came and touched these people. When you have first four step, when you are surrounding yourself to Jesus, when you have a daily devotion and you allow God change your mind, to become look like Jesus, and you are open to the voice of the Spirit, and you are willing to invite people and fellowship with other people to witness to them, then make sure definitely when you share gospel, the Holy Spirit is there for you to touch them and convict them and come to the Lord. Amen? That's five steps that help us to be in divine appointment to share gospel.